Hey, it's Lee Merriweather. You know, the lawyer decided to become a sawyer here. Well, I have so many logs to mill. I've got two weeks to mill as many of these logs as possible. And some of them are customer logs, uh, including that one, which is actually a big old post oak. It is about 27 inches in diameter on this end and over 20 feet long. So we're actually gonna cut it in half because some of the wood we're gonna, we're actually gonna quarter saw some of it and they are gonna be two inches thick and an inch and a half thick. We're gonna, we're gonna, out of one of the logs, we're gonna cut it a few different ways. You'll see what I'm gonna do in, in the video. But part of the reason we're cutting this in half is because I have a tractor to move around this wood, but once it's finished and drying, it's still gonna weigh a lot. And the customer who plans on woodworking with it, well, uh, they don't have a tractor in their shop or even a tractor to get it out of their car, to get it inside their home. So for that reason, I'm cutting this in half. It'll be easier to work with on the mill uh, as well, not just uh, easier for the customer. But we're gonna cut it in half, put it on the mill, uh, we're, we're going to quarter saw this and the other the other half over there we are just going to turn into i believe i got to check my notes but we're going to live edge either we're turning it into six quarter lumber which is an inch and a half or we're live edge slabbing it at an inch and a half i've got notes on it i just need to double check obviously before i put it on the on the mill i will double check all right well, let's get to it
sometimes you just got logs that take forever to get milled. Eh, this one is starting to become that just fine. But thankfully, before I cut through it, I flipped the log over and found this piece of metal in it. So I'm going to have to figure out, I'm going to have to, oh gosh, it is in there good. Darn it. Well, it's a good thing I found it before the saw blade did, because that would have ruined another saw blade. All right, well, let me get this metal out of the tree, and then we'll start sawing up. Okay, so I got, finally got that piece of metal. Was holding the hammock. Got that out. Uh, so now I'm ready to mill. Well, so the first thing I do is I, I'm gonna take a cut off the top to flatten out. But before I do that, my goal is to make sure when it sits, because I'm gonna quarter saw this, that the pith, that's the pith, the exact center of the tree, I want it on the same plane. Obviously this is not precise, I want it within an inch. So it's about 13 inches. This is about 13 inches off the bed of the sawmill. And so I go to the other side and make sure it's about 13 inches off the bed of the sawmill. There it is, about 13 inches. There's the pep again, so right at Right about 13 inches. I hope you can see that. And that so when I take this part, this top part off and flip it over, this pith, this pith right here will be at the same location on the on the other side when we flip it over. And then from there, I'm gonna figure out where and how I'm gonna cut everything. So and that's where the metal was. I had to chisel around it to be able to unscrew it and get it out. Hopefully there's no more metal in this though. Oh, another piece of metal in this. Oh, just ruined another saw blade. Oh, I don't even know what this is, but this was down at least an inch and a half into the wood. Mm. I'm going to have to dig, dig this out too, because I don't want to make another pass until I figure out what that, how deep that goes. Deal with metal.
metal and I hit something like this, it usually it's just about every time it's going straight down because when someone screws something into a tree, um, it's to hang something up so they screw it down in this direction. Unfortunately, either that's another piece of metal all together right down in there or this was is actually but I can't yeah I can't figure out what's going on here but anyways now not only did I just ruin my saw blade but I also then just tore up my chainsaw blade my chainsaw chain ah just so frustrated anyways I may have to cut this whole section of the log off I can't get deal with that uh, but I mean, I can't saw this up. I know telling how deep that goes and what, like how far in that direction it's going. So one saw blade and three chains later, I finally was able to cut out this chunk of metal. I mean, it starts here. You can see it there. It actually goes down here. Um, I tried to run the saw blade through here. It ran into the metal again. So the metal went all the way down here. So it was, it's, I'm not sure what it is, but several inches thick, four or five inches thick. I made one more pass. Unfortunately, this is what happens when the saw, saw blade gets dull. It took it dove a little bit, but I wasn't about to put a fresh saw blade on there to ruin it as well, because when it hits metal, it ruins the blade. Um, unfortunately, this wasn't this part wasn't on the other side. This is this discoloration. When you see this in a log, this means that there's metal there that's the discoloration you get from metal and wood unfortunately it wasn't on the other side it wasn't here um because i would have not i would have been very careful not to saw here but it's on this side and there but you can see how far it goes down I'm, i mean the metal must end right around here so i just barely mi missed it with that last cut but at least i was able to get out and let's hope I'm gonna put a fresh saw blade on. Let us hope there is no more metal in this blasted tree. One saw blade and three chains. I'm gonna have to sharpen three chains and hopefully I can sharpen them at home and don't need to take them to the shop or throw them away. Okay, so I stopped for dinner because I had to take a break because I kept hitting all the flipping metal. Oh, and was able to make a finally make a my first cut without hitting any metal. Yay. Uh, and let me show you. So I flipped it over and remember I said the goal is to sort of get this pit to line up. So we're right about you know right around 10 inches right there. And over here, the pit is about 10 inches. So my goal is to keep it within an inch. That's pretty darn close. Um, so now I'm gonna mark up where I'm gonna make my cuts. Um, and they're all rough marks, they're not perfect because the saw blade's gonna make the right cut anyways, the parallel cut. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, mark this up, how I'm gonna cut it, and hopefully cut it before it gets dark. Okay, so I've marked up this log for quarter sawing. Um, the, the, the saw blade's gonna be naturally, like this isn't perfectly straight, cause I'm not, the, the 
point are the, of these lines is to identify where I, the direction that I'm having the sawmill enter the, the wood. So the first cut I'm gonna make is right here and it's gonna go all the way across, wait. Ooh, I got an issue. Huh. Hmm. See, here's where I run into a problem sometimes. So if I make the cut around here, all this is, um, this is close to, this starts becoming rifts on. That's gonna be flats on right there. So I actually, I may redo this. You know what, I'm gonna redo this. Then I look a little closer, make my first cut right here. I'm gonna drop two inches, make a cut here, drop two inches, make a cut here. And then, um, but uh, this part will get pushed off right here, this upper part. And then once I've cut these three slabs, I'm gonna actually cut this this pith out because that's gonna crack later on and, it, and then none of it's gonna be quarter sawn in the directions it's going. Um, but I guess my first cut's gonna be here because this is all quarter sawn material here. And so like once I make a cut here, my first cut here, that, that will leave this for me to quarter saw this part. Um, and it'll come all the way out here and then there'll be a piece right here. So, yeah. And, and sometimes this is as much of an art as it is a science because you'll notice the grain pattern is different over here than over here. Um, when I say grain pattern, I'm talking, I'm in not grain pattern, the ring pattern, the patterns of the rings uh, as they go. So uh, sometimes you you may have great quarter saw material here and pretty good quarter saw material on this side. Um, it just depends on the the rings of the tree and how they're moving. So that's why I said it's not since this is nature. I mean, you, you, there's a lot of art in nature, so a lot of science too. But as far as picking the right spots to quarter saw it. It's as much an art as it is a science. Sun's starting to set. Uh, I'm running out of light. <clears throat> I got this. Finally, got this log started. Didn't hit any more metal. Thank goodness. I uh, got some beautiful wood. I will uh, take some better pictures when there's better lighting tomorrow. But yeah, sometimes you get these logs and you have problems with them, like metal, and then you fall behind and then. You rush things and then one thing after another happens and then that takes even longer. Very frustrating sometimes. But even a bad day at the sawmill is a good day. I'm gonna pick this up, finish this log, and the one that's way off in the distance over there. Finish both those tomorrow. Get her done. It's gonna be some beautiful wood. Can't wait to get some better pictures of them tomorrow. Yep, time to pack it up.